Hi everyone and welcome to another Vector Twist tutorial. In this tutorial I would like to show you how to create a simple speech bubble animation with Illustrator and Photoshop. And this is what we'll create. We'll create the speech bubbles and then animate it in Photoshop with a simple stop animation. Now before we start with the tutorial, please take the time to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, so you'll be notified when the next Vector Twist tutorial is live. Now here in Illustrator I have a color palette. Purple, lavender, yellow and orange. You can work with these colors. I have the hexa codes in the description, so check in the description below or just choose your own colors. The first color, the purple, we're going to be using for the background in Photoshop, so we won't use it right now. The other colors we'll use for the speech bubble. So first let's create our speech bubble. So let's just choose the rectangle tool and create a rectangle. With it selected, hit A on the keyboard or the direct selection tool in the toolbar. And then with your corner widgets, just round it out a little bit. Then switch to the pen tool and create a small sharp rectangle on the bottom. Just like that. You can move it around a little bit, move it closer. Then select both and in the pathfinder, unite them. So that's our first speech bubble. Then we need a second one. We're going to be working with the lavender color as the fill. Use the ellipse tool, so hit L on the keyboard or choose the ellipse tool from the toolbar and then create a circle. Move it on top of the first speech bubble. Maybe we'll make it a tad smaller. Switch back to the pen tool and then create another small sharp triangle. Just like that. Select both of them and unite them again in the pathfinder. Now we need to create just two more elements. We need some circles so that it indicates that we actually have a message. So we're going to be using the orange for our yellow speech bubble. And with the ellipse tool, I'm going to create small circles. Probably just like that. And then make a few duplicates of them, three probably, and then move them in the middle. Let's group them right away. And then we're going to repeat the same for our second speech bubble, but the fill is going to be white. So I'm just going to sample the background of my artboard again, Choose my ellipse tool and then create three more circles that I'm going to be placing in the middle of my lavender speech bubble. I'm going to group it all together. And now we have the elements for our animation. Now let's head over to Photoshop and let's animate our speech bubbles. Now here in Photoshop, I already created a file. Just to show you the dimensions, I'm using 500 pixels for the width and 400 for the height. I filled it with the purple that I showed you from Illustrator and then we can start pasting our first element. But before we do that, let's open up the window for the timeline. So on the window, go all the way to the bottom and choose timeline. In the timeline window, you want to make sure that you select create frame animation. So just hit the button and now we're going to get our frames for our frame animation. Now we're not going to have anything on our first frame. So right away we can create a new frame. So just hit the plus sign in your timeline. This will add a new frame to it, just has the fill of the background. And now we can copy over our elements from Illustrator. So back to Illustrator. We're going to be selecting our yellow speech bubble. Don't select the circles. We're going to add them later on. So just select it, create a copy, and then head over back to Photoshop. Now before we paste the element on the layer, by the way, we're going to be pasting a smart object, so it's going to create a new layer and we also still have the vector element as a smart object if we just need to adjust it later on. But there's one thing I would like to show you. When you go to the timeline and you hit the burger menu, in the pop-up make sure that nothing is selected. Sometimes you will have selected new layer visible in all frames. That means whatever you paste will also be added to the frames before. So that can become quite annoying if you want to hide something or move something. So make sure that nothing is selected. Then we're going to paste our speech bubble into our file and then we're going to be moving it into place. Hit enter. Now this is our first speech bubble. Now we want to animate it that it's falling from the top down to the bottom and it's going to be fading in. Now in order to do that, we just have to select our second frame, hit the plus sign again, so basically to duplicate it, go back to the first frame and there we're going to be moving it out of the canvas. So just select it and then move it up. If you press and hold the shift key, it keeps it all in a straight line. At the same time, when we moved it out of the way, 
You can either have it 100% in the opacity settings for your layer, or you can fade it out. Now in this case, I'm going to fade it out. So I'm going to set the opacity all the way to 0%. Then I'm going to click my third frame, where I have 100% opacity and my speech bubble in place. And then we're going to hit the tween button. It's this small icon down here, left of the plus sign for an extra frame. So hit it. And here we want to set the tween between the current and the previous frame. So make sure you have previous frame selected. We're going to add five frames. We're going to have selected all layers. And then for the parameters, we're going to choose position and opacity because we moved it up. So we changed the position and we also changed the opacity. So it will be fading in from 0% to 100%. Now hit OK. And as you can see, it automatically added five frames before. And when I go to our first frame and hit the play button, I'm just going to change it to play once so it doesn't loop. You can see it will fall down and fade in. Now, if you don't want to have it faded in, just don't set the opacity to zero. Next, we want to make it pop a little. So we're going to add a new frame and then we're going to add a drop shadow. So double click your layer, add a layer style, add a drop shadow. Depending on how strong you want it, maybe set it to 80%. Then I hit OK. So I have this effect, but I don't want it to be shown right away. I want to have a little bit of a smooth transition. Now we can repeat the step what we've just done with moving our speech bubble from the top to the bottom. We're going to create a new frame, so hit the plus sign, then go back to the frame before where you added the drop shadow, double click the drop shadow, and then set it down to 0% opacity. Then go back to the frame where you have 100% of the opacity of your drop shadow, and we're going to create another tween. So hit the tween button, and this time we're not going to be working with the position, we're just going to be working with opacity. And at the same time, because we added effect, we also need to add the effects. And then we can press OK. Same thing, previous frame, five frames, and then OK. Now, if I just go through the frames, here we have set it to 0%, and each frame will fade it in just a little bit more. So I'll play it, and here again, the speech bubble and the effect of the drop shadow is turned on. Now we need our three dots to come in for the speech bubble, so let's head back to Illustrator, grab our group of the three circles with the orange, create a copy, and then back to Photoshop. Now make sure that you're on top of the speech bubble. Before we paste it in, let's create a new frame, hit the plus sign, and then we'll paste our little circles. And then create another copy of the current frame. So hit just the plus sign with the last frame selected. Go back to the previous one and then set the opacity to 0%. Go back to the last one and then repeat the step of the tweening. We're going to hit the button. And this time, we're just going to be working with opacity again. And then hit OK. Now, if I play it again for you one more time, it will fade in the circles as well. Now, before we have our other speech bubble fall in, let's make a copy of the fading in of our three circles. We're going back to frame 16 in this case, where we have it set to 0% opacity for our circles. Then I'm going to press and hold the shift key and click on the last frame. Now I have all of them highlighted, click on the burger menu, and then simply say copy frames, and then go back, click it again, and then Select Paste Frames. In the pop-up, you want to make sure the Paste method is the bottom. Paste after selection, and then hit OK. So let's play it one more. So it will fade them in a few times. And just because it was so much fun, let's repeat this. So I'm going to select where it's set to 0% all the way at the end. Go back, copy the frames, and then go back, paste them in again to be pasted after my selection. Now we're just going to create a new frame. So, so to speak, a static frame. And then let's head back to Illustrator and let's grab our second speech bubble, make a copy, and then let's paste it into Photoshop. So again, I'm pasting in the smart object. I'll place it into the position I like it. Hit enter. Now again, we need a new frame. So select the last frame, hit the plus sign, then go back to the previous one. And here again, we want to move it out of sight. So grab it and then just push it upwards. After that, we're going back to the last frame. We want to create a tween again. So we'll hit the tween button. Same settings as before. The only thing I want to select though in this case, we are not working with any opacity. 
you're just going to be working with the parameter of the position. So select that and then hit OK. Now if I just play this here to the end, you'll see that our second bubble is falling down from the top. Since we have the drop shadow on our first bubble, we're going to be creating the same to our other bubble. So I can just go on the layer of my yellow speech bubble, right click, and then simply copy the layer style and make sure that you're on your last frame. Paste it onto your second speech bubble. So right click and then paste layer style. So we have the same effect. Create a new frame, go back to the previous one and then double click the drop shadow and again set it to 0% opacity. Just to make sure that our other one is set to 80%, I might have copied the wrong layer style, just set it to 80% opacity. Now we click the tween again. This time we're going to be working with effects and opacity, so make sure both are selected and then hit OK. Now we just have to do one more step. We have to bring in our white circles from Illustrator. So let's go back to Illustrator, select the three circles, copy, and then back to Photoshop. Let's create a static frame and then Make sure you're on top of the layers, paste in your circles, again as a smart object, and then put them into the position. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to turn it off and on, just like we did with the first speech bubble. So we add a new frame. In the previous frame, we're going to be setting the opacity to zero. The other frame is set to 100%. We'll hit the tween again. This time we're just going to be working with opacity and then hit OK. So if I play it from frame 50 here, you can see it's fading in. So I want to make sure I copy all these frames to the end again. So back to copy frames and then paste frames after selection. And then one more time, the same thing, select them all, copy them and then paste them back after the selection. And then that's it. Now at the end, we have about 70 frames. You might want to add a few more frames, just like static frames. So let's hit it maybe three times. And then we're ready to export this as an animated GIF. Right now we have a setting of zero seconds in between each frame. Now that can become quite fast. So if I play it here in Photoshop, let's see what happens. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's go and export it as a GIF. So under File, select Export, and then select Save for the Web, the legacy one. In the pop-up, make sure from the drop-down you select the GIF. Then for the looping options on the bottom, in my Photoshop file I have set it to once. So here we're going to make it forever. So it keeps looping over and over again. We can hit the play button to see what it looks like. Do you see in the actual GIF it might be just a little bit fast, so we don't need to save it right now, so let's cancel. Let's go back to Photoshop and select all of our frames, and then pick any one because you have them all selected. Make maybe a 0.1 second delay, and then we go back to File, Export, Save for Web, and then let's see what it looks like. Slow down. And if that is a little bit too slow for you, let me show you, you can actually set a custom setting. So back in Photoshop, I still have all my frames selected. I'm going to select so I get the drop down, and then I'm going to choose other, and then I can set my own delay between the frames. So instead of 0.1, we can maybe set 0.05, which is basically half of 0.1, and then press OK. Now we go back to File and then go Export for the web. Here we get our GIF. Let's play it. Okay, it's a little bit faster, but not as fast. I think that's a good speed. And then just hit Save and then save it as a GIF. And here's our GIF that I've just saved. So let me just click it. Now I think that's pretty neat. So a simple stop animation with Illustrator and Photoshop. And it wasn't complicated at all. And that's it. I'll see you next time.